Hello guys, welcome back to Blockon. In my last video, I have described the landmarks and the PNS approaches for Ankle Block. If you have missed this video, please watch it. I will provide the link on i button and in the description. So in this video, I am going to demonstrate and discuss about the sono anatomy and techniques of ultrasound guided ankle block. The reported success rate of landmark or PNS guided technique is around 90 to 100%. So how ultrasound helps? Ultrasound helps in precise identification of each nerve and also decrease the local anesthetic volume. Like any other ultrasound guided blocks, first we identify the fixed anatomical landmarks like bone or vessels. So here in ankle block, we are blocking total five nerves. Four nerves are from the sciatic nerve and one from the terminal branch of the posterior division of the femoral nerve that is the saphenous nerve. So out of these four, what we have tibial nerve, this one is the biggest one, then deep peroneal nerve, superficial peroneal nerve and sural nerve. Out of these five nerves, four are associated with major vessels. Tibial nerve with posterior tibial artery, deep peroneal nerve with anterior tibial artery or dorsalis pedis artery, saphenous nerve with greater saphenous vein, sural nerve with small or lesser saphenous vein. The superficial peroneal nerve is not associated with any major vessel, but a small artery travels along with it, which can be identified on the ultrasound image. The patient is placed in supine position. A block pillow can be placed beneath the calf muscle to facilitate scanning around the ankle. This figure of four position helps to scan and block the tibial nerve and the saphenous nerve. Deep peroneal nerve is blocked in this position. Slight external or internal rotation is helpful to gain access to the medial or lateral sided nerves. The scanning is performed with a high frequency linear transducer, preferably the short footprint probe if it is available. A 25 to 50 millimeter 22 gauge short bevel ecogenic nerve block needle or 25 to 27 gauge hypodermic needles can be used to perform this block. The local anesthetic you can use according to your convenience. Concentration depends on the indication for the block for anesthetic purpose. Definitely we need higher concentration 0.5% BP vacuum or above and for analgesia purpose 0.25% BP vacuum or 0.2% ropey vacuum is adequate. Regarding the volume 5 to 7 mils is required for the tibial nerve as it is bigger in size compared to the other nerves and for the rest of the nerves we can use 3 to 5 mils of local anesthetic. To perform the tibial nerve block, the transducer is placed in transverse orientation between the medial malleolus and the Achilles tendon. The nerve is seen as hyperechoic oval shaped structure immediately posterior to the posterior tibial artery and vena committens. Proximal and distal scanning helps to identify the nerve and differentiate it from the tendons as proximally the tendon will form the muscle belly. Distally, the tibial nerve divides into calcaneal, medial and lateral plantar nerves. The needle is inserted from posterior to anterior direction in in-plane technique or in out-of-plane technique from medial to lateral side. Please avoid insertion of needle from anterior to posterior direction as the vessel lies just in front of the nerve. For deep peroneal nerve block, the transducer is placed in the intermalleolar region in transverse orientation on the anterior aspect of the ankle. As you can see here, it is seen as two small hypoechoic dots with hyperechoic rim, lateral and superficial to the anterior tibial artery. On proximal and distal scanning, the nerve will be seen climbing up and down anterior tibial artery. If you look at the anatomical relation, the nerve is crossing the artery from lateral to medial side. This is what you are seeing here as it is climbing up. 
you might be thinking where is the vena comitans of the anterior tibial artery this is not visible here because of the pressure over the probe if you release the pressure then you will see a picture like this this is the anterior tibial artery with its vena comitans the deep peroneal nerve will be somewhere around here to block the deep peroneal nerve the needle is inserted from lateral to medial in implant technique or from anterior to posterior direction in out of plane technique and the drug is deposited next to the anterior tibial artery the transducer is placed here in a transverse orientation about 10 to 15 centimeter proximal to the lateral malleolus or if you remember the landmark in pns guided technique that is the line joining the lateral condyle and the lateral malleolus was divided into three parts transducer is placed at the junction of proximal two third and the distal one third once you place the transducer first identify the hyperechoic line that is the fibula that is our bony landmark then another hyperechoic line will be seen connecting the fibula with the crural fascia this is the intermuscular septum which separates anterior and the lateral muscular compartment then look for the superficial peroneal nerve at the junction of this intermuscular septum and the crural fascia the superficial peroneal nerve is located just deep to the crural fascia between the peroneus brevis and the extensor digitorum longus muscles it appears as a hyperechoic flat structure a small pulsatile vessel can be seen next to it here out of plane needling from lateral to medial or in plane from anterior to posterior or posterior to anterior can be done to perform this superficial peroneal nerve block for sural nerve block the transducer is placed across the space between the posterior border of the lateral malleolus and the achilles tendon sural nerve lies next to the small saphenous vein and superficial to the deep fascia it appears as a hyperechoic oval structure adjacent to the lesser saphenous vein if it is not clearly visible you can look for the sural nerve in this area even after proximal and distal scanning if it is not visualized properly you can deposit the local anesthetic in this area if we look at the anatomical relation between the small saphenous vein and the sural nerve as you can see here it lies anterolateral or posteromedial to the small saphenous vein depending on the level of scanning to perform saphenous nerve block the transducer is placed just proximal to the medial malleolus in transverse orientation the saphenous nerve may be visualized as a small hyperechoic structure anterior or posterior to the greater saphenous vein as you can see from the anatomical relation between the vein and the nerve sometimes it is difficult to visualize the nerve at this place because it is very small in such cases the local anesthetic can be deposited around the vein in last two nerve blocks that is the sural and the saphenous nerve block our anatomical landmark is vein so be gentle with the probe while scanning to avoid obliteration of the veins alternatively a tourniquet or blood pressure cuff can be applied in the upper third of the leg and inflated to provoke the distension of the lesser saphenous or greater saphenous veins to help with the anatomical localization of the nerve that's all for today hope you have enjoyed this video catch you in the next one until then keep blocking keep rocking